Hi there, my name is Richard McMahon from the Psychometric Testing website, PassMyJobTest.com, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to pass a numerical reasoning test. So if you have any kind of numerical reasoning assessment coming up, please do stay tuned and watch this from beginning to end, because I promise to help you increase your scores dramatically. Now, before I get into those numerical reasoning test questions and answers, let's have a quick look at what numerical reasoning test questions are and how you can improve your scores. Numerical reasoning tests basically assess your numerical competence, primarily in the use of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, percentages, averages and fractions. Now, they are becoming more commonly used by recruiters and hiring managers to assess your ability to work accurately whilst under pressure. OK, so it's important that we work as quickly as we can during the numerical reasoning test, but make sure we work accurately. That is very important. Now, the best way to pass your numerical reasoning test is to carry out lots of practice questions online, because the majority of assessments are now done online, under strict timed conditions. And that's what we will do throughout this tutorial. Now, it's a proven fact that those people who carry out lots of practice tests in the build up to their numerical reasoning assessment gain higher marks. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to work through a number of sample numerical reasoning test questions, and then I'm going to get you to try some yourself under timed conditions. So let's start with some very basic questions and then we'll, we will increase the intensity as we move along. So question number one. Susan wants to purchase a dress, a pair of shoes, a belt and some earrings, which cost £79.99, £60.97, £14.50 and £12 respectively. How much change will she have from £209? Is it A, £45.14, B, £44.45, C, £31.54, or D, £41.54. Now, my tip here for answering this quickly is not to get too concerned with what Susan's doing or the story behind what's taking place, but to focus on the calculation. So with this, all we need to do is um, add everything up, so it's an addition calculation, and then subtract the total from the amount that Susan has to get the answer. So step one, add the totals together. So we would add 79.99 plus 60.97 plus 14 pounds 50 plus 12 pounds to get 167 pounds 46. And then all we need to do for step two is subtract that amount from the total that Susan has, which is 209 pounds to get our answer D 41 pounds 54. So my tip there, is to not get too concerned with the story around the numerical reasoning test question, but look for the calculation or the calculations that you have to carry out and then go ahead with them. So now it's your turn to have a go. Please put your answer to question number two in the comments section below the video, and we will come on here each day and mark them for you. So I have given you a timer, and this timer is about 20 seconds, which is not that long, you can use a calculator if you want to. So there's a timer on the right hand side. And your question is, Sally wants to purchase a pair of jeans, a pair of shoes, a hat and some earrings, which cost £49.99, £59, £21.50 and £11.50 respectively. How much change will she have from £185? Is it A, £43.11, B, £41.03? C, 41 pounds and four pence, or D, 43 pounds and one pence. Now you have the time it takes the timer to go down to work out your answer and put it in the comments section below. Here we go. OK, fantastic. Well done. Now, as we work through these, they will get harder. And if you do need more time, please just pause the video because it's important you practice the question in full. So let's now try a different type of numerical reasoning test question that is slightly harder. So question three, there are 400 tickets available for an event. If 55% of tickets sell, how many are left? So there's 45% left. 
Is it A, 220 tickets, B, 180 tickets, C, 175 tickets, or D, 190 tickets? So to calculate this, let's think about 400 tickets as being 100% of the ticket total. So we're actually trying to find out what 45% is. Now, all we need to do is divide 400, the total, by 100% to get 1% of the tickets, which is 4. So we know 1% of tickets is 4. All we need to therefore do is multiply 4 by 45%, the amount that we're trying to find out, to get the answer. And the answer there is 4 times 45 is 180 tickets. So the answer is B. So now it's your turn to have a go. Please put your answer to question 4 in the comments section below the video for marking. And your question is, there are 300 tickets available for an event. If 25% of tickets sell, how many are left? Is it A, 225 tickets, B, 275 tickets, C, 100 tickets, D, 200 tickets, or E, none of the above? And you have the time it takes the timer to go down to put your answer in the comments section below. Here it is. Fantastic. Well done. And um, just quickly before we move on to question number five, I hope you're enjoying this. If you are, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate your support if you did. And also give the video a like because that tells me you enjoy the content and I will therefore create more for you. Thank you. Let's now try a different type of numerical reasoning test question. Question number five. What multiplied by five equals 35 times three? So all we need to do here is work out that calculation, 35 times 3, which is 105. So 35 times 3 equals 105. And then divide 105 by 5 to get the answer, which is 21. So 21 multiplied by 5 equals 35 times 3. So the answer there is 21. So you have a go yourself. Please put your answer to question number 6 in the comments section below the video for marking. And your question is, what multiplied by 12 equals 200 minus 56? Here's your timer. Brilliant. Well done. Fantastic. OK, let's now try a different type of numerical reasoning test question. And this one is, now this is <laughs> this is quite hard. It seems really easy, but it's not. How many number fives will you come across between 50 and 80? And you might think to yourself, oh, that is so easy. It's something like 12, but it's not. So let's think about these in our head. So there's one at 50. There's one at 51, there's one at 52, one at 53, one at 54. But people forget that there's two at 55. There's one at 56, one at 57, one at 58, 59. And there's one at 65 and 75. So the answer is 13. Most people get these wrong. Don't forget what I said at the start of this tutorial, is that assessors are looking for accuracy. OK, so don't work through something too quickly until you are fully sure that you have the correct answer. Now it's your turn to have a go at one of these. And I bet you, you get it wrong. Let's see if you can prove me wrong. So please put your answer to question eight in the comments section below the video for marking. This is tough. How many number ones will you come across between one and 100? Here's your timer. OK, brilliant. Now we're going to get slightly harder. So let's now try a different type of numerical reasoning test question. Which two numbers come next in the sequence? 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. And then we have to work out which two come where the question marks are. Is it A, 88 and 176? B, 96 and 192? C, 86 and 172? Or D, 96 and 176? So we have to work out which two numbers go there 
in this number sequence series test question. So what's actually happening with the pattern is each number, as we go along in the sequence, is multiplied by 2 as that sequence progresses. So we start off with 3, multiplied by 2 is 6, 6 multiplied by 2 is 12, 12 multiplied by 2 is 24, and 24 by 2 is 48. So therefore 48 times 2 is 96, and then 96 by 2 is 192. So the correct answer there is B, 96 and 192. So now it's your turn to have a go. Please put your answer to, to numerical reasoning test question 10 in the comments section below the video for marking. And your question is, which two numbers come next in the sequence? And you've got 101, 94, 87, 80, 73. And what comes next? Is it A, 70 and 63, B, 65 and 72, C, 70 and 61, or D, 66 and 59? Here's your timer. Okay, brilliant. Right, now they're going to get harder. So let's now try a different type of numerical reasoning test question. Question 11. What is the total surface area of that playing field? So this is quite difficult to work out. Now, if it was a regular shape, say a rectangle or a square, then we could do it relatively quickly because all we need to do is work out 100 by 80. So if it was that size, it would be really easy. However, it's not. But we still need to work out how big that shape would be to get the answer. So if we calculate this, first of all, pretend it's a full size, then we would work out 100 meters times 80 meters to get the surface area of 8,000 meters square. But it's not that size. But we will keep hold of that calculation. Now what we need to do is work out that surface area, the small part, and then subtract that from the total of 8,000 meters square. So we have those two elements there, 80 meters and 40 meters, because we want to work out this side here. So if we do 80 minus 40, we know that part has to be 40 meters. So therefore, the calculation would be 50 meters across there times 40 is 2000 meters squared. So now all we need to do to get the total surface area of that irregular shaped playing field is do 8000 meters squared minus 2000 meters squared to get the answer of 6,000 meters squared. So if you ever get an irregular shape, work out the total as it would be if it was a full shape and then subtract that small amount. So now it's your turn to have a go. Please put your answer to question 12 in the comments section below the video for marking. Now you might need to pause the video because I'm not sure the timer will be enough for you, but if you do get the answer completed within the timer, well done. So your question is, what is the total surface area of that playing field? Now this is tough, here's your timer. OK, great. Now, as I said, if you manage to get that done within the time, you've done brilliantly. So next question, slightly harder. Let's try a different type of numerical reasoning test question. Below is a pie chart illustrating the number of pupils studying a course in different subject areas. Now, a lot of people make the mistake. They look at this pie chart and it confuses them. But don't forget what I said at question one. You need to focus on what the calculation is. So it says there, if the total number of students is 800, how many students are studying computing? So we just need to focus on this here, computing 9%. So we need to calculate how much 9% is of 800 to get the answer. Very basic. But when you look at it on face value, it looks quite confusing, but it's not. So step one. So 800 is the total. Let's use the process we used before, divided by 100% to get 8, which is 1%. And then so 8 times 9% is 72. So the correct answer is 72 students are studying computing. So now it's your turn to have a go. Please put your answer to question 14 in the comments section below the video for marking. And your question is, below is a pie chart illustrating the total sales in different areas for different products over a 12 month period. 
If the total revenue from sales was £520,000, how much was generated from product B? So you have the pie chart here, and then you've got the key here, so there's product B. And you have the time it takes the timer to go down to the bottom to put your answer in the comments section below. Here it is. Okay, brilliant. Well done. I've really enjoyed working through these with you. Now, what I want you to do now is to get access to my online numerical reasoning test suite because it will really help you to hone your skills and improve your scores. So if you click that link in the top right hand corner of the video, it takes you through to here, passmyjobtest.com, and you can get access to over 500 psychometric tests, including numerical reasoning test questions. There's some questions for you to have a go here on the screen, so just click the link to, to try those out. But you can get access to these tests by scrolling down to the bottom of the page. And for a very small fee, you can start practicing these loads of different psychometric test questions. As I said, over 500 test questions. And this testing suite is compatible with your smartphone and your iPhone, whatever it is that you're using, a Mac, a laptop, computer. And they are great practice because they are done under time conditions. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. As I say, I very much appreciate your support on this channel. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the best for succeeding at your numerical reasoning test. Have a brilliant day. Thank you.